Welcome friends, this is Kim from Stones Hill Homestead and I am going to be making a recipe for um, meatballs. They're called turkey, turkey Swedish meatballs, um, but I would say they're more of a meatball, a turkey meatball and a mustard sauce. But anyway, it is from um, the Pioneer Woman recipes and so I'm just going to make that today and come join along and let's get started. I have a, a pound and a half of ground turkey and I need to cut up an onion and this needs to be diced. It says to grate the onion um, however I'm not going to be grating an onion today because I have trouble with onion juice flying all over. So I'm just gonna cut what I need today. And we'll go from there. So it does say a uh, small onion or a half of a medium. I'm just gonna do um, a portion of this very large onion that I got from Azure Standard. These onions that I got from them are just absolutely beautiful. I I have never seen onions this size. I wish I could grow them this size out of my garden. So I'm just gonna really dice this up pretty small here. I have a chopper I might even use too. I just don't want to get too much onion here. I'm trying to find the best way here to cut this onion so it doesn't slip on me. That would not be a very good video, would it? I do have um, some extra turkey here. This is why I'm doing this recipe. I, I found this package of uh, ground turkey in my freezer. And I thought, oh, I need to use that up during Pantry Challenge. Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead has collaborated this over several years. This is our second year. Last year, I I did start doing the Pantry Challenge um, out of, I'm going to say need. And the reason I say that is because I fell and broke my back last January. And... We were just trying to save money everywhere we could, and groceries seemed to be where I felt we could save the most. So I'm using this Pampered Chef chopper right here to just really get these onions uh, much smaller. It says to have them really grated, and I I like them really small. So I will be back with you as soon as I get these all chopped up so you don't have to listen to all this noise. Okay, so here we go. I got these all chopped up. I'm gonna put these onions into the turkey. Do that. Hopefully you can see. And then the next thing I need is three quarter cup of breadcrumbs. Again, pantry challenge. I'm using what I have. Um, these just happen to be Italian breadcrumbs. So I felt that would be pretty good. It does call for three quarter cup. So I'm just using what I've got, using it up. Calls for a half a cup of milk, oh, a quarter cup of milk. Here we go, I use A2 milk. The next thing I need is two teaspoons of brown mustard. Never 
open this yet, I guess. I'm just eyeballing that. Half a teaspoon of my Redmond's Real Salt. Calls for kosher salt. Sorry about that. Half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I love Redmond's Real Salt. I, again, get that from Azure Standard as well. However, I have also ordered straight from Redmond's and I get a 10 pound bucket. So that way then I don't have to worry about running out. I do not like to run out of things. I think Becky from Acre Homestead is the same way. She likes to have her stuff all stocked as well. A quarter cup of, boy, I am really messing up on my measurements today. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I need a pinch of red pepper flakes. And then two eggs, store-bought eggs. I don't have chickens and I hope someday I do. But for now we don't. So then I'm gonna mix this all together And once I get it all mixed up together, I will put these on a cookie sheet and they will head into the oven and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start doing that. So here I am, I am all mixed up with everything and I'm just gonna roll these into some nice size meatballs here. I'm gonna put them on a greased cookie sheet and get them ready to bake. I thought this would be a great way to use some of, some of my freezer stuff that I have purchased over time and these will be great for lunches for me. Um, I probably have never shared with you what I do outside of the home. I work at a local hospital and I am a, a polysomnographic sleep technologist. So if you have sleep apnea, I am those, the person that does the studies. I perform the studies at the sleep lab. I put, I'm the one that puts all the wires on you and I run the study, I score the study. Um, just do all kinds of different things. I fit you with a, a CPAP mask. And sleep apnea has, has not been a um, huge topic over the past 40, it, it's not been really heard of until I would say the past 20 years is where it's really became um, to the forefront on, on how beneficial our sleep is to us and the things that happen during sleep apnea. You know, your oxygen levels drop and the chances of, of other things coming to pl into play and, and harming you, such as diabetes, um, high blood pressure, heart disease, heart failure. The biggest thing we always want you to understand is if you're driving and you are drowsy, pull off the side of the road, you know, accidents happen. People are falling asleep all the time. And so what sleep apnea is doing now, of, or what, how it's treated, is the main gold standard of treatment is a CPAP or BiPAP machine. That's not BiPAC or by CPAC. It is CPAP and it ends with a P. Anyway, so CPAP is what we use to treat you with therapy. There's other things that they can also do if, for different kinds of sleep apnea because there's many different kinds. And often I hear, well, I snore really bad, so I have sleep apnea. Well, remember that sleep apnea is not diagnosed by snoring. 
you can snore like a freight train and not have sleep apnea. However, it is a symptom of sleep apnea. So don't, don't think that, oh, just because you don't snore that you don't have sleep apnea. A lot of times it's hereditary. And if your parents had it or a sibling has it, there's, it's often that you do have it as well. Um, my dad was never tested. However, I am 100% sure that he had sleep apnea. I am a clinical sleep educator and I do see the signs and symptoms of sleep apnea. I had a um, brother that had sleep apnea and I say had not because he's passed, but because he has taken his health into his own hands. He has done much research and he has switched to a ketogenic lifestyle, keto eating, and he has lost a tremendous amount of weight. And I'm going to say he's probably in the 120 to 140 pound range that he's lost. I am very proud of him. He has done wonderful um, health made wonderful health choices. I wish I could be as healthful as him, but he he has made wonderful choices and eat, it doesn't work for everybody, but it, it has for him and I am very proud of him. So anyway, back to sleep apnea. So I do, I do test people. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask, ask them. I am happy to direct you where I can. I'm not a doctor but I can at least tell you where to go and, and what you need to research and, and talk to your doctor about if you think that you might be having, having some sleep-related issues. There's other treatments also. There's dental appliances you can do. There's also um, an Inspire, which is a new technology. I am also um, credentialed, I shouldn't say credentialed, I am certified to perform those studies. And an Inspire is an implant where we also treat sleep apnea and there is a surgical implant like a pacemaker. And with that, it goes into your, into your chest about the, on the right side of your chest, like a pacemaker would on the left. They put this in there and they run a wire up to your tongue. That's the, the basics of it. It goes up into your tongue and it and it shocks you to hold your tongue out of shocks your tongue it gives you a voltage to keep that tongue out of your airway and opens up your airway so anyway so as i'm sitting here rolling meatballs feel free to ask me questions or ask questions on or ask me what you'd like to see maybe there's something you'd like to see me can all my i've been doing some canning videos and i'm happy to to help you out with canning if I can. Again, not professional. I just have a passion for it. I do things um, to just help people learn. I watch videos to learn as well. I, I have really enjoyed um, learning different things from people with that. So I'm finishing up the meatballs and when I get to the next step, I will come back and share that with you as well. And the next step, we'll be making our sauce. So I'm just gonna hold these up here closer for you. Some of them are pretty good sized. Um, I think I, I got a little bit crazy on some of them. So now I need to refrigerate these for 10 minutes after I'm done with that, I'm gonna get the broiler going and I am going to broil the meatballs until they're browned. And they're gonna, they, they take about four or five minutes. I do turn them sometimes. They say I don't need to, but I, I like to make sure they're fully done. So I will be back on the next step. Okay, so I am starting here with two and a quarter cups of uh, beef broth. You can use whatever you'd like, um, I'm sure, but it says low sodium. If you're worried about salt, you really need to um, watch that. But it also says now two tablespoons of brown mustard. And again, I'm just kind of eyeing it up. One tablespoon of Worcestershire. I'm not 
not good at eyeing that up, so get me a measuring spoon. Love the flavor of this. I think that's what makes many sauces so delicious. So now I will be bringing this up to heat Oh, in a skillet. I'm going to bring this up while the meatballs are going because this needs to thicken up. I'm going to be adding some more ingredients and I will be back with you. So now we're going to add our beef broth, mustard, and Worcestershire sauce to the skillet here. Picked up. Eggshell. there. Get all the good bits out of there. I don't want to miss any of my beef broth. So that's some good stuff. I'm going to bring this to a boil. And while that's coming up to a boil, I got my allspice out, which is the next ingredient. And then it calls for cornstarch. And then we'll add milk. I'm going to slowly add the milk in there, but we got to bring this to a boil first. Okay, so this is coming to a boil. I need to add a pinch of allspice. Twist that in. Then I need to mix my cornstarch and a quarter of a cup of the beef broth. I need to whisk that well in there well. And I'm gonna whisk this in here to get a thickened sauce. And that is coming up. Quick, I'm gonna turn that heat down. Take it off the heat a little bit. That took no time at all to thicken up. step is I'm going to add the meatballs to the skillet and I'm going to cook the meatballs the remainder of the time in here. We just wanted to get them brown and I'm going to lower this down here so you can see what's happening next in the oven. Open this up see what we got and we just want to get those tops and those meatballs brown look at how beautiful those are they look wonderful so now let me adjust here again see what I'm doing here Adding these meatballs. I don't 
don't want to grab them and have them fall apart. There we go. I'm going to get a different, I'm going to get me a different tool here to get them into the skillet. It smells divine in here. I hope my skillet's big enough to put all these in here. I, I usually don't make meatballs. I know that they're easy to make. I, I'm not sure why I don't, um, but I, I've i saw many people make them and they just, they look so simple. I thought I should probably try this. This will be a great lunch for me. Working third shift and being up all night. I, I'm just getting started and you all are winding down for the day. A lot of people wonder about that, how I do it, but I don't know how people are up during the day. I don't know. I think you're all aliens most of the time because to me, I just want to sleep all day and each circadian rhythm is different for each one of us. And I'm glad because we all need different kinds of of people in our lives, everybody's different. So, okay, everything is in that skillet. Doesn't that look beautiful? So now we're gonna simmer this salt. We're gonna, we're just gonna simmer it until it's completely cooked through and thickened. Takes about eight to 10 minutes. And then you can serve your meatballs over rice if you want. You can serve it, eat them plain over noodle, whatever you would like. I am going to probably serve serve them or eat them over mashed cauliflower, like a potato. I don't eat a lot of carbs. Um, I try to watch as much as I can. Um, I stay away from as much gluten as I can. I do not have celiac disease. However, I do have an inflammatory issue. So I always try to do that. And this recipe, other than the breadcrumbs, um, which are gluten-free, they are gluten-free, but I don't go out of my way to buy gluten-free products because they are just as unhealthy as eating gluten in your diet. So I only use them on occasion. But if you have any suggestions on what to thicken things with other than gluten-free breadcrumbs, I, you know, I'd appreciate it. I, I've tried many different things throughout my life. I love Tinkiata pasta that I get from Azure Standard. So that is one, one of those convenience foods that I do get. But if you have any suggestions on, on what to put in things like salmon patties or, or like the meatballs. I could have used pork rinds. I have used pork rinds that I've crushed up in the past over different things. So maybe, maybe that'd be a good option. So I appreciate you all joining me today. And I look forward to the next video with you. This is part of my pantry challenge recipe. And hopefully you'll see some more before the end of February. And pantry challenge, again, hosted by Three Rivers Homestead. Three Rivers Challenge. Jessica has collaborated that. And it what it is for me is I do not go to the grocery store at all through January and February. I don't buy anything. I did allow myself a budget of $10 a week for the month of February. I did have an Azure order that I had previously ordered in December. And there were onions in that and a head of cabbage in that. I have not used that yet, but I'm guessing I will use both of those before the end of February, or at least start getting into those items. Being self-sustained with my garden, with my pantry, with my freezer, with my meat in the freezer, um, that is the goal. And to save a little bit of money, I have not spent 
the normal grocery budget that I normally spend since in between Christmas and New Year's. That is the last time I went to the grocery store. So that is something that I have learned and I appreciate Jessica and all her direction through this. So again, thank you for joining me. Again, this is Stones Hill Homestead. If you like my videos, you know, give me a thumbs up. It helps to grow my channel. If you want to see more um, in the next video that I do, hit subscribe. Um, I'd love to have you join us. I'm pretty down home, simple kind of girl. I don't have a, have a lot to um, share, but what I do know, I will share. And I appreciate y'all joining in. Thank you so much again and be blessed. Have a good evening.